Hey guys, CBC here. So today I wanted to show you a new section on my website called the R&D section. So in order to find it, it's on cbsuper.com. Just come over here to the R&D section. This is where I'm going to drop all of my beta tools, my project files, fusion comps, and pretty much anything else that I just doesn't really fit in either the training or the home section of my website. So you see, I only have two posts here and it's just set up like a blog format where you can come and you can browse to see whatever I've been working on. I'm also going to be putting some fusion comp files and some setting files on here. Anything that I'm working on that may not be to the level of getting its own video but you guys might find interesting whenever I make a video I'm gonna try and grab that project file or something from it and I'm gonna to toss it in here with a little description so if we come down here we can see that if I click on this VHS tool beta right here at the top this is the actual dot setting file if you click on that it's gonna go ahead and automatically download to your computer and then you can load that in your macro folder and you can play around with the VHS tool that never really got released. I have a little bit of backstory about what the tool is, why I created it, and why I never released it, and how I may or may not work on it in the future to get it to some kind of production level. Again, all of these tools are absolutely free, so sometimes there's not a whole lot of incentive to go back and finish a tool that maybe didn't work out very well, so sometimes I'll just abandon it and then try to recreate it. So you can take a look at what the tool looks like here, and then of course you can play around with it and even use it in your own projects. Another tool that was in development is this animate tool. And again, the dot setting file is right here. And it's essentially what this tool was is it's supposed to be kind of a one-stop shop for single object animations. Allows you to either fade it in, uh, drop it from the ceiling, slide it right, slide it left, uh, and then spin it counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, you can control the speed and the delay just using simple time speeds here. And then of course there is the ability to move it around and add some motion blur if you would like. Um, here is a simple comp and I'll throw this comp up there probably sometime later today. So if you guys want this as well. Essentially what you can do with the animate tool is we go ahead and select all of these polys. We can see that these are actually that crown and it's just uh, attached to a background. Now if I was to shift space type in the word animate, I'm going to go ahead and bring in that animate tool. And I'm just going to slide the drop slider over to drop. Now you'll notice that it disappeared, but then when I hit the space bar, it has a preloaded animation where it simply drops from the ceiling and then it just hits the ground and it kind of does like a little shake. They're not pre-rendered, but they're pre-animated. I've already animated them. I've already timed them. You can change the speed in which they animate. You can make them go a little faster or a little slower. I wouldn't slow them down too much because then you, it starts to get a little choppy. And then the delay just allows you to push the animations later on. All right, so here I've, uh, I've just simply rendered it out. If we take a look at it, and that's just with one simple drag of the slider there. There's a bunch of other different animations that you guys can play around with if you want. Like I said, um, these are absolutely free. I didn't feel comfortable putting them in. These are not finished tools. In fact, I'm still working on the anime tool. I was working on it um, even last night, just trying to get it even to a point where you could use it. So the problem here, and there's problems with each of these tools, like, like the VHS tool is really cool, but unfortunately it's so heavy that for a lot of people's systems, it could even crash your system simply by using it. So if you don't have a very powerful system, I would be kind of careful using that VHS tool. It just has way too many tools that are very heavy inside of it. And you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw this down just to show you what it looks like. If you, if you drop this VHS tool in and I'm gonna just plug this into the out and then drop it in over here. And you can see just how long it's taking even to just load it into the viewer. And the reason is because if, if I even just select over this, you'll see it's got 52 different tools inside of it. And some of them are very, very heavy and very destructive tools. You can see what it does. It, uh, it gives it kind of a, um, an old timey uh, aspect ratio here. You can actually remove those aspect bars if you want and you can make it back into its 1920 by 1080 comp. It also uh, gets blurred. Um, we reduce the sharpness, we give it some grain, it has some rolling noise that will animate. It gives us some static, we've got flicker in there, we've got some shake. The tape wrinkle, this is the tape wrinkle right here, which essentially just stretches it out and it also animates as well. There's three different wrinkles, you can turn them off if you want. You can also turn all of the wrinkles on off, which will take off all three of the wrinkles. There's some uh, color shifting. You can add more purple to the shadows if you want. There's also a color mute that allows you to mute the colors. 
and then you can change the aspect bars by either adding them in or taking them off and then you can adjust the corners if you want as well. You can mask certain portions out of this because this is what I used in that VHS video. It's a pretty interesting tool. I thought that I would be able to create a VHS look simply by using the TV node and it just wasn't possible. There was a lot of different things that I needed to do in order to um, create these. So what I'm going to do with that research and development, that's going to be more of like a learning area where you can, you can take these tools and you can use them if you want, but there's also going to be more about how I went into how I built them and there'll be images of the, the, the node flows. And I'll even expand them for you and just have setting files with all of the tools so that if you want to recreate these and maybe take some things out, maybe you can do that and add that to your own projects. So I don't know if that's something that you guys are even interested in. I wanted to find a way to give you guys these tools, but then, you know, let you know that they're not completely finished tools. And I don't like putting out things that are going to crash your system. But if you guys want to do it, um, use them at your own risk. And I hope you guys can learn a little bit from these. Uh, they are interesting and they are fun. So that's pretty much it for me. If you guys have any questions about R&D page on my website, feel free to leave them down in the comments. If you have any questions in general, you know, either head over to the Discord. I'm still out of town, so I haven't been on it very much lately. But in a couple weeks, I'll be back and uh, I'm going to start working on some more videos for you. Well, I hope you guys are all staying safe in this COVID time, and I'll see you guys when I get back. Later.